Welcome back to the channel, guys and girls. Finesse Monster Activist Bull. We're going to take a look at the Mullen chart. We're going to recap on it because the last video I made, I talked about this pattern that is in this wedge pattern starting from up here at around 97 cents, 98 cents, give or take. And at the end of this pattern is where Mullen Automotive was trending. That red line I have around 45 cents where Mullen was consolidated for like a week and some change straight. But then there was some selling pressure to break it below that 45 cent level and then retest all time lows of 39 cents. In today's trading day, Mullen did not push back above 39 cents. It rejected and it went lower with news on a production update that we're going to get into. And yes, the bottom of this wedge is at that 39 cents level. As you can see back here, there's a touch point at 39 cents. That was also the starting point of that nice run up to that close to that dollar range where Mullen has been pulling back since. Ultimately, the volume has not been there on Mullen's side and the shorts have been taking advantage of the stock price. And it's gonna take a lot of volume to get Mullen Automotive right back up here into this wedge because there's still Some room for sideways trading if Mullen can get back into the edge of this wedge. But yes, a new all-time low has been hit for Mullen Automotive around 35. 50 and that is not a good look time is not on Mullen automotive side shorts are taking advantage of the low volume and trying to keep it suppressed up until the hearing date of october 19th and that is when Mullen automotive will find out nasdaq will give a conclusion or a decision on whether Mullen stays delisted on the exchange and gets a 180 day extension or will they be delisted and sent to the over-the-counter markets? Just like I've mentioned in many of my videos here today as well, the off-exchange volume is over 74%. It now makes two whole months where the total volume that Mullen was trading has not hit the lit exchange and it has been over 70%. I've also been covering this data point when it comes to Mullen's cost of borrow, you see these spikes multiple times at the 0% borrow fee rate happening. And while that is happening, the borrow fee continues to drift and slide all the way down. It is at about 12% borrow fee rate. And that's just been the trend for that, around 400,000 shares availability on a consistent basis today. But it seems as though since the failure to deliver numbers have been going down or not happening so often because of the loss that Mullen has against big brokerage firms. The borrow fee data has been manipulated, in my opinion, to make up for that. So Mullen did come out with a production update for shareholders, and they did say that the Class 1 EV cargo van production is on track to begin in Q4 2023 with the company producing an estimated 300 vehicles not 1054 vehicles like i told you guys that randy marion said in my previous videos and i did also tell you guys that i could see at least 350 vehicles of the class one vans being delivered by q4 simply because that's what they had 350 vehicles being at final assembly in tunica back in july but like i said those were just my thoughts um, people are saying that they're waiting on airbags for the other vehicles out of the 1054 that Brad was talking about being already produced and that wasn't officially announced and no one seems to know where these vans are. So 350 was the number of class one vans that I was saying they could at least have delivered by, by end of December and lo and behold, they announced 300 of the class one cargo vans that will be produced. In summary, the following reflects total planned commercial vehicle production for calendar years 2023 and 2024. 2023 estimated commercial vehicle production, 150 class three EV cab chassis trucks and 300 class one EV cargo vans. 2024 estimated commercial vehicle production, 
850 Class 3 EV cab chassis trucks and 6,000 Class 1 EV cargo vans. David says, I am proud to say both our Class 3 production acceleration and our Class 1 manufacturing preparations are on track at our Tunic assembly plant. We have firmed up our production schedules for 2024, which align with our existing customer orders and provide ample room for additional customer demand. With all that being said, in the short term and in my personal opinion, time is not on Muller Automotive side, no matter what updates they have been putting out. I can't really say right now whether I believe Mullen will get the 180 day extension or not, but I do believe that if they do in fact get it approved, there will be some upwards pressure in the stock price, but for how long will it last? And will there also be another reverse stock split coming if Mullen cannot reach a dollar organically going into the end of this year. As I said, again, with the time not being on Mullen's side, a lot of things that Mullen has going does take time, unfortunately, especially with a lot of other companies. But as far as like the lawsuit, that's going to take a lot of time in order to get any results, as well as getting to some significant revenue for the company. And that's what Mullen needs. Mullen needs right now, example, the buyback. No more shares have been bought back besides that five million. The company needs action now or it will continue to trend down and keep making all time low after all time low. And then maybe the NASDAQ may not consider granting an extension. Unless of course they grant it, then Mullen has to do a third reverse stock split. So let me know what you guys think about this and the production update numbers. Give me your thoughts, leave it down in the comment section. If you like this content, be sure to hit that like button and consider subscribing and I will catch you in the next video. I'm gone.